Welcome, future masters. Okay, now, what are we going to do here? <sighs> well, it doesn't look like we're winning, does it? Although, we do have rook to c2 and then rook takes a2. Winning that bishop, there's nothing he can do with that bishop. Can't defend that at all. I guess he could play knight to e1. Rook here, knight e1. Here, you're still losing. No, he takes it. Check. He goes to there. It's kind of slow, as they say. Well, what about something like rook to c3? That doesn't do anything really either. Hmm. Bishop checks. Doesn't seem to do anything. What about bishop to... No, bishop to b1 is also no good. Uh, okay. Hmm. to C2 ideas very slow. It says knight to E1's a killer. Well, bishop C2, knight E1. Bishop to E4. Rook takes a2. Let me see. Bishop rook c2. Knight e1. Bishop e4. Knight captures bishop. Rook takes a2. He has to do something. The problem is he no longer has the ability to block. Yeah, that's the thing. He doesn't have the ability to block because his knight never captured the bishop on d3. So look at this again. Rook c2, knight e1, bishop e4, getting off of the d3 square. He takes it. Knight takes bishop, but we'll take it back. We go rook takes a2, threatening to take the bishop and skewer his rook. So he makes a defensive move like rook e1. Then we just go rook takes bishop. And then we're going to clean this up with pawn captures knight. Actually, rook c2 is the move. Yeah, good luck, Charlie. Oh, no, that's a killer move, I'm telling you. This is stupid. This is just stupid. He's not playing the right defense. He just goes knight to c1. Look at this idiot. Knight to c1. Followed by king to c2. Hello. So the computer the computer defense is wrong. I didn't make a mistake. Your problem is the mistake, Sonny. Report your problem because you got a flaw to answer. He played a trash move. They do this from time to time, and it's ridiculous. Now we get this bishop check. Do we have a... Does he have a vicious attack, is the question. But we just, we just take his queen. You know, attack over. This is, this is how you solve it. Goodbye, queen. I'll pocket my piece and, you know, say adios, muchacho. Hmm. Well, rook takes f4 check. Pretty basic. <sighs> oh, 
Dorsal knight takes e, no, knight to e5 check. Even better, right? Knight e5 check. King g7, queen g6 check, king into the corner. And then what do we do is the question. Well, we have rook checks, king to g7, rook to g4 check, king to like, I don't know, h7, I guess. Hmm, knight, I don't know, there's a knight check, king g7, queen checks, king into the corner. Do I have anything else? Doesn't look too great, really. <clears throat> Let's try this again, rook f4. King to g7 forced, only move. Queen to. <clears throat> Good question. Queen to, I don't know. Mm. Well, rook g4 really looks like the only check. G4 check, king to h7, followed by the uh, 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 uh. rook takes. Doesn't do any good, does it? Queen, we do have queen to e4 check. Might be useful, followed by king h8, queen e5 check, bishop to or bishop to g7. Uh, I don't like that either. G7. Yeah, or we get, well, Queen to E6 check. What does that do? Hmm. Knight E5 seems better. Oh, yes, it is better. So Knight hits F7. Sometimes you have temporary blindness. All that matters is that you get the right answer legitimately. Well, we do have rook takes rook, key takes knight checks. Now what? Good question. Doesn't really do much. Do, do, do. What about this? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, look at this nasty move. Bishop to e5. Queen takes bishop, rook takes rook, king takes rook, knight f7, check, gets the queen. But he can play rook, Kate takes rook. And then, I put bishop takes queen, he plays rook takes queen. And we gain nothing. So... We might have to trade, change the uh, order of moves. Rook takes rook, king takes rook, bishop to e5. But I don't see that we're really doing anything special. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Hmm. 
Hmm, I see the rook and the knight on the diagonal. That's interesting. Can we hit that dude? That is a good question. Hmm, rook takes, rook takes, check. King or something, I don't know. Ah, yes. Rook takes, rook, rook takes, rook, check. King takes, rook, queen to d1, check. And then I can play... If he goes king to c8, knight to f7, threatens mate on d8. And if he goes back to e8, bishop to c7, threatens that same mate. I like this. And this. And this. Which wins a piece. Wins that knight. It was that rook and that knight on the diagonal that triggered the solution to that. How you like that one, baby? Pretty good. I like that bishop e5, but that didn't quite cut it. What did he take from us? He took a pawn? Pfft, idiot. He should have played queen to b6. Now you know. Crunch. If he goes king to c8, knight to f7 also gives this unstoppable mate. Well, this should be fairly obvious. We cannot take his pawn because it's a draw. We have to go here. And we have to go here to the shepherd position. Shepherd position. This is queen versus pawn on the seventh rank. Easy win because his king is not here. If his king is here, you can draw. 42 seconds, and I, I, I explained that one and beat it in 30 seconds. Not just beat it, but beat it and explained step by step of how this fails. All right, let me Like I said, you why can't we take this pawn? You know the answer. So, he goes here. We're going to the shepherd position, which is really d7 and shepherd the pawn. I invented that phrase. No one uses that shepherd position phrase. That's another one of mine. Undeterred, I head to the shepherd position. Got a queen on you. No, you're not. Shepherd position, you're done. Like I said, now, if the black king is down here by the pawn, it's a draw with a, with a, with a bishop or a rook pawn. He's not there. So this is the special case where the king is distant from the seventh rank pawn, he loses. The other... The other exception is if the black king is close to the pawn and the white king is close to the pawn to the point where he can threaten checkmates. So there's like two basic exceptions. The bishop pawn on the seventh rank draws unless the king is far away or unless the white king is just point blank close to get into the mating position. So this is where you've got to know your king and pawn end games. You've got to know that, that this would be a this would be a draw if he was you know in a different position. So pretty fantastic. What was this rip off? Okay. They swindled me on that one. What was this one? This one was a twenty one eighteen. Oh sorry. No. Yeah, twenty one seventy two. Twenty one eighteen. Toasted that. 2310. Toasted that. This was 2545. 
toasted that one. Good problem. This was a really great king and pawn endgame problem. This showcases, you know, important stuff. And funny part is, this is the only one where the square of the pawn really isn't that big of a deal. Black is in the square of the pawn. But that, that isn't the key. The key is the, the shepherd position. So here he moves, you know, to stop it. But he's not, he's really, he's not doing that. He's not stopping anything because we're looking, we're looking at a position that's unbeatable. So <clears throat> the key move probably of this problem, the key winning move is king to d6. Because what we're really doing is we're looking to shepherd this pawn to queen. And there's nothing he could do that's going to queen with check. So if he presses forward, press, if he presses forward, we queen with check and then go queen to e2 and eat the pawn the next move. So he has to make the move hoping you make a mistake because people make mistakes. But like I told you, I was going for the shepherd position and now you see why this is a shepherd position. There's nothing he could do in a king and pawn ending to this pawn queens. So we didn't take his pawn because that's an obvious draw. But if you don't know your king and pawn endings, you might have to you might have to wuss out and draw. You're like, I don't know. Can I win this? It's fairly easy for me to see this. I'm looking I was looking at this. When you do a lot of king and pawn endgame work to master king and pawn endgames. It's move number one, e6, f5. You know, we're visualizing this, e6, f5, king e5, f4. King d6, f3, e7, king f7, uh, king to d7, f2, queen, and you lose. So how many moves is this? This is two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you, and I, at this point, it's, you know that it's one. I don't have to go any further than this nine because I know this shepherd position is going to win because he's going to be one square short. And is the queen. So when you have, you know, you have a low number of pieces on the board, I was able to go basically like 11 moves deep. In visualization so very important stuff you need to look at this and master this this might be one of the most important problems in the entire group because this shows you once again mastery of king and pawn endgames will do wonders for your chess ability you walk into endgames with confidence that other players just don't have so you know what the deal is. Like the video. Tell me what you thought about it. Subscribe and get more of this gold. I will talk to you guys later.